Hello there, and welcome to Halflands. Halflands is a, a new game. It's uh, available on Steam Early Access and Humble Bundle, and well, a few other places like D uh, what's it, Desira. Um It's an early access game, so the usual uh, rules apply. Uh, it may have not not have all the features yet. It could have some bugs. Uh, it's subject to change. All the normal early access stuff. But this is a game, it's, it's a medieval fantasy city building RTS. So it's very much like the original Settlers, or I, the one I played, which was uh, actually Settlers 2, which I really did love. Uh, and so the normal, uh, normal rules apply we had in the Alexis, but we're going to get straight into it. And uh, this is a game by Sergei, Sergio and Simon. And they've got quite a lot of options in it, so we're just going to come in with the as far as the normal menus go, nothing special, but I do like this part here. The auto save when quit title is optional. So you can go, no, nope, I want to be able to just save when I want to save. Or actually, yeah, I'm going to quit, I want to do auto save. Because that's good, because some people like to say, right, I'll play the game, I have a problem, add a problem, quit, done. But some people like to say, well, I'll quit, oh crap, I didn't save. Well, that saves you. Great, I love that. Also, I took, you know, if I took the music down to zero, you know me by now. I don't like music in games. Music might be good, but it distracts me from the game. Okay, so we're going to go into a new game. So I have played this for a little while, and all the options are completely random. So you can go random, 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 random. Give yourself a name, or you can even name your city. So I'm just going to give it a random name, and then you get all these, all these options to begin with. So the shield shape, I mean the shape of the, the actual shield here. Loads of them. There's 60 of them. I will go with that one. Shield colour. Purple. Ooh, black. Brown. Like a nice blue. I like a blue. Blue, 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 blue. Ooh, there we go. Blue with a white stripe. Well, I want to change that. Well, I could change the pattern. Do, do, do. Ooh, I like that one. I don't want white. Let's go. Ooh. Boop. Uh, that's one of the little bugs. It's just a tiny little one, but sometimes some colours don't match. It's actually uh, allow all colours needs to be ticked. Or you could randomise it. And then you can pick your culture. So you go, duh, 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 duh. I want to be a Westerner. And Westerners can grow grain, turnips, hops, and cotton, breed chickens, pigs, horses, make bread from work. Duh, 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 duh. And they can assume 50% more food, generate, yeah. You know, so, and they've all got their own unique stats. So that's great. So, for example, the Westerners, they drink beer and they like they have an archer for their military. They also consume 50% more food and generate 20% more tax. The Easterners, Drink cider, they use spearmen, they consume more alcohol and have more workers. The southerners, uh, they drink wine, they have horsemen, they consume 25% less alcohol and have 25% less workers. And the northerners drink mead, they have axemen, they consume less food and they generate less tax. Now, from my experience, the hardest thing is to maintain the money. Because you need the money to pay your military if you have if you need the military. So let's just random the name, and we'll random the flag just for the fun of it. There we go. We'll have ooh, a little bit of that. Uh, we're going to stick with northern because I do think the the food's never been really big issue, but I, I I think this is the actual best combination for me anyway. So next, well we're going to pick the ruler. So the ruler da -da 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 is cold web wicked cold riddle. <laughs> <laughs> and he is the. Let's have a look. Pick, pick a good one. Let's pick a good one. Uh... He is the. Oh, uh, I'm waiting for a decent one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Give me a funny one. <gasps> no, I want banished. I want something. Yeah, riddle the disgraced. You got control of the skin colours, and you got hair colour, and you can do with moustache and a beard, and you just random the guy. All right, stop playing with the face, Peter. Stop playing with the faces. Okay, so now you pick your game. What game mode do you want? Well, we can go with medium. Let's do a local map size of medium, because yeah, medium. We'll have nine rivals. We'll start with 25,000 coins, which I'm assuming is like gold or currency for the game. And we'll have natural resources set to normal. 
I'm going to turn monsters off and I'm going to have uh, passive rivals set. So the passive rivals means they won't declare war against me, but I can declare war against them. So it gives us a chance of getting into the game, play the game a little bit, and then if we... Well, anyway, when we feel like it, we can go and attack somebody or trade with somebody, but we don't want them to come at us while we're, while we're playing around with it. I want to see access, uh, just because you can. You can. I want it. I'd like to see. I'm not going to do free build because I want to have the game on and get rid of the monsters because I was playing a test version, dug into an iron mine, woke an iron golem, and I had no one to deal with it, and I lost everything. So they're off for now. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Dun dun. I'm happy to report, sir. He's very happy to report a lot of things and ignore him most of the time. Let's just make sure the game is paused. Good. Right. So, it's a, it looks like an isometric style game. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, but what you've got is all the little bits, like the rabbits here in front of us. The rabbits, click on them. The rabbit can yield one meat and one wool. So you can use the meat to, for food and you can use the wool for producing different items. Over here, we also have some turkeys which produce feathers and meat. And what else do we have? Just a quick scout around this local map. Okay, we've got some iron there. So the iron there produces six iron ore. We have the board produce leather and meat. Leather obviously can be used to turn into boots. Uh, more rabbits over there. Trees obviously can be cut down to logs. So that one produces one, that produces two logs. This is just a mound of stone, so we can mine stone. Got some water around. So I'm looking for a nice place to set up a home. Uh, okay, we've got uh, mushrooms. The mushrooms can be used to make medicines. And flowers can be used by the bees to produce honey, which we need to produce our mead. So we're getting, a, that's a pretty decent area there, right in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I'm just scanning around looking for a coal seam if we have one. We may not actually have one on the map. They are entirely procedurally generated. Oop. Okay, okay, let's have a look over here. And then, I'm not quite sure what the brown land's for. Uh, we've got some more iron there. Got some trees. Okay, so it looks like we don't have coal on this map. Now, the one thing I do would like really for us is the, there's no scroll, so you can't zoom out, and you can't rotate the camera. So it's all locked into one view. That's the only real bugbear I've got. I'd love to be able to swing the camera around and zoom out and take a nice look at the map really quickly, because on this little mini map, you can't tell where the resources are. So. I got some iron there, and I got stone there. I got my mushrooms and flowers there. More stone there, but I can't zoom out to see if any coal. I have to do this really long, windy, swinging around everywhere map thing. So, we're going to start our town. Well, let's see, we've got fish in the ocean. There's one lot of fish there, and that's the only one in there. Okay, so we're going to set up near there. I recommend we do it in this area here, nice and clear. We've got some there, we've got some trees here, so we'll start by the trees because we will be needing those. So, down at the bottom here we have the uh, tool bar, and we're going to start by building a house, because houses are how, you get your, how we get your workers. So, but houses need to be upgraded later on. So, they need to be uh, well spaced, they get... Well, things happen to them, so you need to space them out a little bit. I mean, my first one I packed them right in, and they went, oh, the land value in the area is so low, you can't do anything. I went, ah, oh. and I can't upgrade it because there's houses all over the place. Hmm. So, we'll put a house down there. There's our house, and now complaining we haven't got a road attached to it, so road, and we'll just run the road up to here. Boop. And we'll also run another road that way. Boop. Okay. So you can see the cost up there. That's our currency. Uh, population's there. Now, population goes up when people arrive and can go down if the houses devolve. If you don't supply them with food, people will leave, basically. Uh, but you've got to keep an eye on things because although your population goes up by saying, well, we've got room for eight, which means this house can handle eight, which actually, yes, uh, current population zero can handle eight. And this is all the house currently contains. The problem is, when eight people arrive, you don't get eight workers, because not everyone is of working age. So that's the kind of little twist switch. Now, we're going to need wood for making something with raw material. I'm going to get a woodcutter's lodge and place it just there. Actually, I might place it there, so it's more, more central to the uh, to the trees. Boop. And he needs to be access to the road as well, so I'm going to make his road straight down here, because that road there is probably the wrong place, actually. I want to get that fish later on. Right. So we now have a woodcutter, but we need also a sawmill. 
Let's have a look. We got Forester, Mercenary, Coal Mine, Iron Mine, uh, probably under Industry, Sawmill. So we can actually convert the logs directly into uh, planks for use. Now you notice straight away these little heads on top. These little heads are telling us right now that we, uh, yeah, we don't have any workers for them. But on top of that, we also have no food production. So food's something we've got on running. So food, we can produce beehive. Uh, get beehives to produce honey. Uh, the honey can be used as a food source. And there's the flowers for the honey, which we can do. Or we could build a fishing boat, fishing fishing quarry, and go fish there. But we need to make a boat, so we'll start with a very simple hunter's lodge. Uh, we'll find both some animals, some animals nearby, hopefully. Do 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 do. do. Let's just get going again. Bit okay. We have some turkeys over here. And wild boars there. Uh, there's no animals down that way. And more rabbits over here. Okay, so because of the turkeys and the boars are relatively close by, I'm going to place the hunter's lodge up here. Now, it's far away from where I want my ba my ba my town to be, but it's the only thing I can do. So hunter's lodge goes there. We're connecting. I will need a smokehouse. Now, a smokehouse converts the meat into food or work. So we're going to put that there. Now it's far enough away, but the guy will walk it. So I want to put a road there. Boop, boop, there we go. Now he's complaining about no workers as well. Everyone's got no workers, and we're going to immediately buy a second house because, we, well, I know this game and I need, I'm going to need a second house really quickly. Now, if we just unpause it, everything's moving around. Yes. Um, I'm going to just temporarily turn off the song while using this little shutdown button here because I want the workers to get into there because they need, basically I need them to hunt. And chop wood. The wood can be burned in here because it takes uh, logs and meat and then produces worst, which can be fed to the people. Now, where are my people? They usually walk in off the edge of the map. I'm just going to find out which edge they're going to come from. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, there they are. Hello, people. Hello. 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 I've got a feeling that's actually the voices from the uh, developers because. The... Your Majesty, my Lord. Your Majesty, my Lord. Because it's the same voice all the time. Your Majesty, my Lord. But that one wasn't. But yeah, I got a feeling the developers did the voices themselves, which I actually like that. It means it means they didn't go out and spend money on sound people and get voices from, from stock areas. They actually went and did it themselves. So they, we know the voices are going to be pretty uh, crappy at first, but that's just the way they are at first in all games. Okay, so we now have people in those houses. And you'll notice straight away, these have changed to a yellow edge rather than a red edge. It means they don't have enough workers, but they do have workers. Also over here, these ones are gone red because they're saying, we need food. The house will devolve if it has no food. What that means is people actually leave. Now we have eight in each house, that's 16 population, but that means we only have a workforce of 10. That means six of our population are not working right now. Oh, there's a little uh, woodcutter doing his job. Drop that uh, tree down. There we go. Now he's going to go and recover the wood for his uh, smokery, smokehouse. And our hunter over here should be hunting rabbits, turkeys, and boars. Now I'm going to put down a quick building storage and distribution. I need a storage yard to store the finished goods and a peddler's tent boop, to supply the goods to the houses. He will make sure the food gets delivered to the houses and excess goods like wood and stuff will end up here. Uh, as you can see with this one, this requires 18, 18 uh, staff members, they only have three due to our low population count. The uh, woodcutter has two out of six and the hunter's lodge has two out of 12. That means we need to actually get more population in. So I'm gonna do road up to there. Oop, that was bad. I could do with some shortcut keys, people. There we go. So just make sure they're spaced out nicely. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the road out this way and place houses every uh, so often. So I want a two gap. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. So uh, sorry, I want a road with a two gap between them. Then put them together. Then a sort of three gap, and then like that. 
So what we can do is have the road go up there and we can put things between them if we need to pretty up the area. Now that's going to give us a lot more people. Basically we actually uh, tripled our population. Now they haven't arrived yet. They will be. There they are. All of our new people coming in. And they're going to be uh, supplying work workers. Hopefully it'll be enough to get us going. And we are definitely uh, producing stuff now. I wish I, could, I wish I could turn around this so I could see if he's got any material. The uh, I don't think he's actually hunted anything yet though, which is interesting. But I'm going to move the road around him. Oh, he can't do that because it's a weird way. Okay. Whoop. Here come all our new uh, new workers. They're going to go down to their night house. Now, I found this out by myself. This road type here looks different to this. This is normal road. This is road with high land value. If I just go to appeal, you can see normal and where the workers are, it's sort of dark and groomy and ugh, area. And where the food peddler guy is, it's nice and pretty and hey, look at that. It's a light cover. And the road shows it so you can tell if I look at the road what the appeal is like in the area all right so he's bringing more wood into there we've got a new trade route which we're going to ignore because they come up like every 15 seconds at some points in this game oh there we go look we have some food and some leather being brought down to the stockpile and into there and now the smoke house is now actually producing worse when that's complete that will be taken most likely to the peddler's tent and then it'll be taken to the houses to give them uh, food. So we do have staff, do we have enough staff? We are still short on staff. We have 57 jobs and 29 uh, workforce employees. So we are actually going to progress through uh, quite nicely actually. I'm not under, the reason I'm not setting this up yet, I need this around. But my mistake for building it so early, I need that if I want to go fishing. Because we need it for the uh, making the fishing belt, so we need planks. But we don't need planks for anything else right now. So I'm happy to leave it alone. Okay, so the woodcutter is doing pretty well. Everything else is running. But if we actually look up here, we have uh, the economy overview, which gives us a generic how much stuff do you have in. Uh, which actually is useful for the other food. It shows that we're consuming eight, but producing 120. So we're well over our production requirement. And um, this is actually <clears throat> this shows how important jobs are. This is our tax and employment. We pretty much ignore the tax it's on auto, but you can say, oh, well, I I must have the hunting at maximum. Bump hunting maximum. Or actually, this is great, but I just can we just make the distribution a bit lower? So you get control over how the workforce is spent. Now you can't control individual. Oh, I want you to have five. You here to have five people instead of twelve or nine. But you can change the overall for all the buildings by just changing up from high, medium, low. Which is a nice little trick. Uh, so there's some worst going in. That is actually food. And he's going to take that to the peddler's tent, which goes there. Just a little food icon in there. He's got five units of food. That's basically, he can feed five houses. So we're going to get into more meat soon. And when they upgrade these houses, I just want to get one upgrade. Let's go to full speed, which is a three times normal. Uh, the peddler should. There he goes. The peddler's delivering food, and the and these houses here looking okay. He, and then to there, there go. all the houses are okay, and they will now evolve in the next month. Now, what that basically means is, when the end of the month comes, these houses will actually upgrade to a bigger, better type of house. Now we are produce, still producing food, and we're still producing logs. Uh, we got some spare logs now as well. There we go. He's uh, going around now. Okay, let's just slow the game back down again. Now all these houses, you might notice, they look a little bit different now. They've got log walls and a thatched roof. They've actually upgraded. And now they're saying they can only upgrade again, but only if they get alcohol. You know. So now they've got food, but they need alcohol in order to improve again. But now, our population of eight in this house has room for an extra four. So there's an extra four people potentially coming in. And they should be, there they are, on their way in. So they came, they basically set off as soon as we uh, had the new people capable. Dropping down the tree. So we'll have to zoom in on that action and see it properly and from another angle and everything. But there we go, more wood. Take it down to the uh, storage yard. Uh, the hunter's doing his job and the smokehouse is happily smoking food away. 
So yeah, we are progressing quite happily, and these guys are now going in, and our population is going up quite happily. 50 to 60, and uh, next guy comes down, actually goes 64 to 68, and then hopefully 72, if I remember right? Yes. So we now have a workforce of 43, but we still have 57 jobs. So right now we're not up at 100% efficiency, but we are up there. Now we can also increase our I think with alcohol industry, we can produce a mead brewery. That'll help us upgrade these houses, but to do with mead, we actually need honey, so today requires honey. So we'd need to go to, I don't know, which one would it be? That one there. And make a beekeeper's lodge and beehives. So beekeeper's lodge, uh, I think put it there. And have our beehives. Now the beehives, after we've arranged these flowers, that white bit is the actual beehive. The blue bit around it is the uh, number of flowers it can see. I'm just going to place these around. Maximum flower coverage. There we go. And I have checked, it doesn't matter if you overlap the beehives. There we go. So that should supply plenty of honey. Boop. 6% ready already. And the worker from here will collect the honey when they're done, deliver them to our tent here, and our. Boop. Mead Brewery will pick up the honey and uh, start producing alcohol for our nice friends over here to uh, get their stuff. Okay, so we've had the basic run through the game. It's a uh, quite interesting game actually, quite nice. Uh, I'm going to try and play on a bit more with you guys in a couple of episodes and we'll just see how it goes. Uh, we'll get the town bigger and then we'll start up, maybe start a fight with somebody or... Uh, something on those lines, maybe we just progress up and see how big we can get it and stable, because it is, obviously you do get diseases and stuff, and we didn't have mushrooms for medicines, and guy delivering food to all the houses, and none of the beehives are going to be ready yet, 24% ready there, 28, yeah, so they are producing honey slowly, and the beekeeper will deal with it, but for now, I think it's a great place to leave the episode, so, as usual, comments in the comments, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. And also, let me know what you think of the game and if you want to see a full series. Because if I don't hear from you all, I will make a full series. Well, I'll make a series and we'll see how we go. But let me know, do you want a full series? Should I restart this and have the um, monsters turned on? Or should we just continue on this level? Or what? Let me know. And... Yes. I'm sorry, I confused myself with the own padlock. But no, why is that... Why is that? I didn't build the, the fishing. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> As usual, comment in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll uh, see you next time. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing.